In our last episode, we fully explored Georgetown. There we found a grocery store, a Radiation King television shop, a missile launcher, a Mr. Handy Robot itching to take the dog out for a walk, another missile launcher, a boutique restaurant with more missile launchers, And we found two exits. There was the Georgetown The Mall metro station, which, as the name implies, led us to the mall. And then there was the Tereg Car, Tereg Car, Tereg Car metro that led us to Pennsylvania Avenue. But we didn't go to either of those two places. Instead, we decided to go back to Foggy Bottom and cross the train platform to explore DuPont Circle. I'm sure we'll find our way back to Pennsylvania Avenue and the mall in a future episode. And as I promised in my last episode, I fixed the low FPS problems we've been having during firefights. Turns out it was an issue with my new ENB. To fix the problem, I simply disabled ambient occlusion and detailed shadows. I'm guessing that the problem only happened during firefights because muzzle flashes from enemy weapons created new sources of light that each cast new shadows. And in big firefights, that's dozens or even hundreds of new shadows that my recording software had to process on the fly, leading to the hitches. At any rate, the problem solved, and we emerge from the foggy bottom metro at the bottom of a staircase, leading to DuPont Circle. At the top of the staircase, we see the Washington Monument looming off to the southeast. That's right, we are just a hop, skip, and a jump away from the mall. The buildings all around us are crumbling into the street. We see that the street goes off to the northeast as well. Exploring around the metro marker, we don't find much, so we can start by moving southeast, but we don't find much down this way. The entire road is blocked off to us. The road should move east from here, but it's completely filled in with rubble. All right, so the road right outside the Foggy Bottom Station is New Hampshire Avenue. Not sure exactly which road this is, but we can't follow it. So back to New Hampshire Avenue, we can follow it north. As we begin to round a building, we see a raider off in the distance, and he quickly spots us. Oh! Gosh. I dumped points into small guns early on, and it's been helping, but I think it's about time I should probably dump more points into it. That took way too much ammunition. Looks like we're not done, though. Finding cover behind these mailboxes, we see one more on a hill. Well, so much for my sniper rifle ammo. After looting a couple of bobby pins from one of the mailboxes, we level up. Welcome to level seven. But instead of dumping more points into small guns, I really needed to get my science skill up. There have already been too many terminals I have tried to hack that I couldn't due to my science skill. So we'll bump this up to 45. We've got the vault tech outfit in our inventory that we can always put on if we need to hit that 50 to hack advanced terminals and dump the rest into repair. That's gonna help both with weapon damage, armor factor, and our inventory. Then the next perk in the guide that I'm using is toughness. Moving to the end of the street, we see that we're about to move on to Massachusetts Avenue. Looking east down Massachusetts Avenue, we see a small rubble hill with a wooden walkway on top of it, but immediately to the left of us, we find a raider camp with a couple of mattresses where we can sleep. There is a shelf to the northwest with two first aid kits. We can walk away with a number of stim packs and ammunition canister on the bottom, and then another shelf with another ammunition canister. The nearby box just has some scrap and an eight ball inside. Well, I don't need to sleep just yet, but it's good to know these mattresses are here. We'll probably be coming back quite often. Moving east down Massachusetts Avenue, we can climb that rubble hill in the middle of the street to see what's on the other side of it. At the top, we see a table with an ammo canister nearby, but before we can do any looting, we spot a couple more raiders near to a circular fountain in the middle of a plaza. 
I'm just not gonna waste any more ammo on this. Racing forward with the shoddy. Oh crap, the road is mined. Well, we killed the raiders, but we just walked into a minefield. We set one off accidentally. How many more are around here? Not really seeing any right now. Well, we can loot the bodies anyway. Oh, no. Oh, those things hide well. Using just one stim pack to repair our broken limb, because after all, we have those mattresses nearby that we can use to heal, saving stim packs. We can look around to see if we can find more of those mines. What? It was, it was hiding in the grass. I saw that one mine sitting there on the concrete, but I stepped on another one hiding in the grass. Oh, this is a nightmare. Well, uh, before we waste any more stim packs, we can hobble our broken limbs all the way back to that tiny little raider encampment that we passed by the foggy bottom station and rest for one hour. That heals the limb and heals us up. Okay, back to that rubble pile in the middle of Massachusetts Avenue. We can finally loot this table. On the table was some jet, two frag grenades, and an ammo canister filled with 5.56 millimeter ammunition. Now to get a lay of the land. It looks like we've arrived at a circular plaza with a fountain in the middle of it. Hence the name DuPont Circle. We see the Washington Monument towering off to the south, and it looks like a number of roads met at this circle, but some of them are blocked up. However, a few appear to be traversable, and immediately to the left we see a caged off section. Looks like we've got a road down there, and off to the east we see another metro marker pointing down the road. Oh, what's that? It's another raider. Well, I'm out of sniper rifle ammo, and he's walking the other way. I guess we'll get him when we get him. Now, to get down off this hill, I think we'll start by going counterclockwise. But first, we need to get rid of these mines. Creeping towards the fountain in the middle of the circle, we see a mine off in the distance, but then... Oh, that raider turned around and came back. He spotted us. Well, we can creep towards this bus stop and use it as cover. Maybe that will force him to come to us. And it did. There is a suitcase with some clothing inside the bus stop. And turning around, we see a pre-war diner right next to a road so blocked up with rubble that we can't explore down it. That is one epic looking diner. We see tables just outside the diner and red rope forming lines. This place must have been busy if people were lining up before the war to get a bite at the diner. Before we get distracted, we can move back towards the circle to see if we can find more of those mines. We see that one, but is there any hiding? What? Are they invisible? Does this place have invisible mines? This is not even fair, man. They're everywhere. Okay, uh, turning around, we can... Oh, there's one. Hiding in the bushes. Got it. Okay. Any more hiding in here? No? Okay, so turning around. Ah, there's one. All right. Have we got them all? Nope. There's one by this tree. Looking good. Well, I think we're through the worst of it. Oh, wait. Oh, there's another. Oh, Jeez, and I walk right over one to get to the other one. Oh god, this is just awful. I'm beginning to understand why people are still digging up mines from the Great War over a hundred years later. What? Ah, got it! Oh, maybe I should just leave. Forget this place. Someone else can loot all the mines. Just see if I can find a way out of here now. Oh, uh, now I'm just pissed off. That's just pissing me off. But I think that's probably it. We've either looted or tripped all of the mines here and at last we can explore the fountain in the middle of dupont circle we see the same stone maiden that we saw at the arlington cemetery this time however they're in the middle of this fountain the water is here but we don't see water running this long after the apocalypse but up at the fountain we don't find anything in the water and nothing in these bowls so back to the road 
We can head back to that diner that we found immediately to the right of the path to Foggy Bottom and continue exploring counterclockwise. The next path to the right of the diner is blocked in with rubble. Can't explore down there. But continuing southwest, we find a marker pointing towards a metro station. Peering that way, we see a road leading to a tunnel. In the road is a bus and other ruined cars, and ghouls are on the staircase. Looks like we've got to clear this out. Moving that way, we can grab some frag grenades until we arrive at the top of the staircase overlooking the tunnel and we can toss them in. Well, that was expensive, but at least we lowered our carry weight. We'll use ammo for the rest. Okay, that should do it for the ghouls. Moving down the steps, we arrive on Connecticut Avenue. Turning north, we see that this path to the tunnel is blocked in with rubble. We see a number of cars still on the road, and turning south, this way appears to be blocked as well. Moving all the way to the end, sure enough, we can't go any farther. Though off in the distance, we do see a ruined monorail sitting on a monorail track between a couple of ruined buildings. Interesting bit of set design there. But there's nothing for us down here, so we've got to go back to the staircase and head back up to the top. Turning southwest, however, we see what appears to be a metro station entrance next to a billboard. Looks like the only way to get there is to cross this ruined road and hug that building off to the southwest. So moving around to the other side, we can skirt this wall and jump over some rubble to arrive at DuPont Station. And here we can take a look at the map. All right, so we're here at DuPont Station. This is what we just discovered. We arrived here from DuPont West. This led to Foggy Bottom. Looks like we've got an unmarked entrance nearby at a collapsed car tunnel, and then two more metro exits here, DuPont North and DuPont Northeast. That's a lot of exits for one little place. Let's see if we can find them. Moving around the map, we can turn east. We see a sky bridge going over this car tunnel and peering to the right of it, looks like there is an alleyway back there. So there's plenty for us to explore. But moving around, we can head down the escalator to see what DuPont Station is all about. At the bottom of the escalator, we find a unique poster on the wall that we don't find anywhere else in the game. Your new remodeled DuPont Station. Thank you for writing. Oh, so this tells us that just before the bombs dropped, this station had been recently remodeled. Doubt we'll be able to see any evidence of that now. At the bottom, we find two doors. A traditional metro door, and then a side door. The side door goes to a collapsed car tunnel. Oh, and then heading towards the main gate, we find graffiti on the wall, a Brotherhood of Steel logo, and a note to Mall Outpost. This way. Okay, this gate goes to DuPont Circle Station and apparently to a Brotherhood of Steel outpost. Well, uh, let's start by exploring the collapsed car tunnel. Heading inside, we can creep down the darkened staircases and round the corner. Oh. <laughs> Guy needs to pay better attention. <clears throat> round the corner and go down the stairs to open a large security door. We hear ghouls on the other side of the door, and we see ghouls on the other side of the door. Oh, glad I wasn't in there when that happened. Of course there are exploding cars and a collapsed car tunnel. So this tunnel must lead to the road that we saw just outside DuPont Station, the one where those ghouls raced up the stairs to kill us. This is what those cars would have driven through had the entrance not been blocked. 
Moving forward, yeah, the road to the south is completely blocked in. Not even sunlight is creeping through. So turning north, we can explore this way. We find more ghouls. <laughs> Moving down, we can loot the bodies next to the city liner bus. Here we find the corpse of a wastelander. He just has bottle caps. The ceiling to this tunnel has pieces that are falling into the road, blocking our passage. If we go around to the other side of the city liner bus, we do find a fire hose box and a first aid kit with stim packs inside. But then turning back north, we hear ghouls on the other side of another city liner bus. To the left of the bus, we see a door off in the distance. Let's see what's to the right of the bus. And here we find a raider corpse with ammunition on it. And that's it. So going to the left of the bus, we can move towards the door, but then to the right, we find another door. Okay, so this is the end. And we find two doors out, a door to the east and a door to the west. The path to the north is blocked, but we see that we are almost to the end of the car tunnel. We see light from DuPont Circle peering in through some cracks, giving us some lonesome road vibes. But this concrete is way too heavy to shift. So we've got to go through one of the doors. We'll move to the west for now. And going through the door, we find more graffiti. Two mall outpost. And here we find a door to DuPont Circle Station. What? On the other side of the door, we arrive in a hallway. Looks like an office hallway. Oh, but then this begins to look familiar. It's a repair bay for one of those Metro Ticket Taker Protectrons. There he is, still in his Protectron charging dock. And sure enough, we find a Metro Security Terminal nearby. This one, however, is very easy. So we didn't need 50 in hacking to hack it. After playing this mini game for a while, We at last hack the sucker. We find three options we could try to turn on metro lights, failure, call maintenance for service. We can try to turn on metro escalators, failure, call maintenance for service. We can try to activate the metro protectron. Protectron activated. The doors open. Metro security protocol initializing. He picks up a threat on the other side of the door. Even though he saw me crouching right in front of him, he didn't appear to take me as a threat. Maybe because I had my weapon sheathed. He never asks for my metro ticket. Instead, he focuses on the noise of a super mutant. Yeah! Wish I had a new weapon. Something good to smash with. Wish I could hold one of those behemoth clubs. So big. So much crush. Huh? What are you? Some kind of human? Tickets, please. <laughs> Stupid robot. No entry without tickets. Please present your tickets. Entry for the terms. Unauthorized Metro. Use detected. Target list acquired. Silly robot! Smash it! Time to die! Hostile target detected. Commencing by And the Protectron dispatches the other! Well done, Protectron! Move along, please. Okay, fine. All right, so this is DuPont Station. I can't give him my metro ticket. He hasn't asked for it yet. We can loot the dead. And then turning east, we find a Nuka-Cola machine against the wall and a gate leading up a ramp back to DuPont Circle. This puts us back to the bottom of the escalators by that graffiti on the wall that said to Mall Outpost right next to the door to the collapsed car tunnel. Ah, so that was the connection back inside the metro station. 
We can turn right to find that the path to the platforms is blocked, but here we find a door, the wall of which is marked with more Brotherhood graffiti. Opening the door, we can go down a staircase, open a security door to arrive at the tracks. Uh-oh. This is gonna be fun! Yeah! Tear him apart! Don't kill me! Oh, well, okay. Guess I'll kill her later. She'll be back. We find two tracks that would have led to DuPont Circle Station, but both sides are blocked. The south is blocked and the north is blocked. Raiders have built a little outpost here. We find an ammunition box right behind a sandbag barricade. On the other side of a scrap wall is an easy locked ammo canister, another ammo canister on a shelf, a lot of booze and some scrap. The northern passage is blocked. We do find a bed here that we could rest in to heal up. And the only way forward is to go back south and head through the door with a red light that the raider escaped through. Time. Yep, she came back. You're dead, big sack. Oh, another one. Go. After looting the dead, we can head up the stairs to arrive in a hallway that then goes downstairs. We see a nook to the right, and the path continues off to the left. Exploring the nook to the right, we see it decorated with a bunch of stuff. On the table is some Psycho, Medex, a stim pack, some Jet, and Buff Out with some Scotch. On the shelf are two pieces of Radaway right and a first aid kit. All right, finally some more Radaway. Right Taking both of these brings my radiation level all the way down to uh, 410. God, this radiation is just really crippling me. I gotta find another way to get rid of my rads. We can load some Radex next to the first aid kit. Then to the left of it, we find an ammo box and an easy locked ammo box. And that's it for the nook. So heading back, we can continue to follow the path round a corner to the south. It goes down, then into what appears to be some sort of floating pod. Our compass picks up hostile ticks off to the south. And peering off to the south, we see at least one turret. On the other side of the door, we find an average locked turret control system. Perfect. Our points will not have gone to waste. We can put on a vault lab uniform, which bumps us up to 50, and we can hack it. Now, these advanced ones are a pain in the but not ashamed to say that I had to quick load a few quick saves to get through this sucker. But at last, we succeed. On the other side, we find three options. In system information, as usual, the raiders have just hacked this thing full of profanity. We could deactivate the turrets or reconfigure the targeting parameters. This clears the raiders from their non-hostile memory banks, which causes them to turn on the raiders. Let's listen to the carnage unfold. Oh, that's one. Wait, but they're still shooting. Oh, that's another. Well, there must have been two turrets out there. But it doesn't look like it killed many raiders. We see at least four ticks on the compass. Well, looks like we got to do this the old-fashioned way. And by old-fashioned way, I of course mean throwing down a bunch of frag mines. And then lobbing some frag grenades. <laughs> it's killing time! Ooh. 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 Oh shoot, my vault tech lab coat is still on. Let me put some armor on really quick here. All right, putting my Blastmaster armor back on. We can wait for her. All right, at least two more. As if we can just throw grenades until we get up. No, you're here. I'll find you. you Come on up, boys! Fresh meat! Kick ass! Eat it! There you are! Oh, fuck me! Well, at least that got their attention. Maybe that's all we needed. All right, one more. Let's brave it. Peeking outside. Come on out. I promise a quick death. 
Oh, he's below me somewhere. Well, let's loot this floating pot while we can, and loot the bodies while we're up here. Some ammo in a nearby desk, but that's about it. So back out to the catwalk. We can start to move down the steps. Oh, there he is. Ugh. Well, spray and pray, I guess. I think that's all of them. Heading down, we can loot the bodies until we reach the ground. We're at the bottom of some sort of cave. Pre-war America had erected this entire floating platform and catwalk system, easily accessible from a metro tunnel, for some reason. To leave this cave, we find a tunnel to the southwest. Peering up, yeah, that's where one of the turrets was, and following the wires, there it is, the second turret. All right, well, looks like the turrets served their purpose. Heading into the cave tunnel, we pass by a number of lanterns. The tunnel turns east until we arrive at a catwalk crossing a flooded section of this cave. At the end, we arrive at a big double security door labeled Utility Gate. This puts us into a utility sewer we find a pile of bodies by a cinder block barricade. On the wall near to it is more Brotherhood graffiti. Mall outpost that way. Oh, and more mines. Near to the body pile is an ammunition box and an assault rifle. We can loot the bodies and we walk away with a little bit of ammunition. Then we can loot these frag mines. The sewer tunnel then goes up to the east, and here we find a trip wire connected to a fragmentation bouquet. We can go ahead and disarm the trip wire, but I still didn't have high enough explosive skill to loot the frag grenades. Continuing up, we find more ghoul bodies, and at the very top, we find a door leading to Metro Central. On the other side of the door, we hear the sounds of a gunfight. Creeping forward out of curiosity, we can open this door. What were they shooting at? Two raiders in this room, glowing with red light. After looting the bodies, we find quite a haul here. Three ammo boxes under a table covered with stim packs, a 10 millimeter pistol, and frag grenades. One of the boxes is locked with an easy lock. There is an assault rifle leaning against a table. The room is bisected by a cinder block barricade. And at last we see what the raiders were fighting. We find ghoul corpses on the ground. Moving towards the door, we see it goes deeper. Well, this video isn't about Metro Central. It's about DuPont Circle, so closing the door for now, we can retrace our steps back to DuPont Circle Station. We have now found multiple paths to Metro Central. It'll be fun finding our way back here after we start our exploration of Metro Central. But back through the sewer, we can go through the cave, across the floating catwalk, up the big metal steps leading to the floating platform, then up more steps and through the hallway until we arrive back at the train tracks that led to DuPont Station. But since they're blocked, we can turn right into this corridor, go up the stairs and back towards the turnstiles to pass by our new Protectron friend, head into the repair room. But here we stop for a second because I realized I had forgotten to loot this room when I first explored it. I was too preoccupied with the Metro Ticket Protectron and the Super Mutants. And it's a good thing I did because in a bin lying on a table by a desk fan, we find a copy of Lying Congressional Style. But that's really all that's in this room, so to continue, we leave out the back door and again open the door to the collapsed car tunnel. Back inside the collapsed car tunnel, we can see what's through the eastern door. Opening the door, we round a corner until we find a door that leads to DuPont Circle. On the other side, oh God. One more.
Make that three. Night has fallen on DuPont Circle. We can loot the dead and try to figure out where we are. We see that the path to the south is blocked. This is likely the very same rubble blocking the northern path of the tunnel we just explored. So turning around, we see that Connecticut Avenue goes right over us. Passing by another bus, we find a bit of a rubble ramp in the middle of this road, which allows us to climb out of the tunnel. Here we find ourselves in the bottom level of a ruined pre-war building. We don't find any stairs, but using the rubble as ramps, we can move to the second floor, which is in utter disrepair. But on the third floor, we find a door, and it's marked with Brotherhood Graffiti. GNR Outpost. And at last, we know exactly where we are. We are at GNR. This is the back exit to the GNR building. This is where Three Dog is. It's where we came during the primary plot of the game. We had to come here during the plot to meet Three Dog, and then we came through this door to arrive at DuPont Circle to head into Metro Junction to follow the graffiti to find the mall so we can access the Washington Monument and get a new communications relay dish for Three Dog. But looks like even if we wanted to, we couldn't start Three Dog's quest from here as we don't find a way to get to the third floor from here. There is no staircase or rubble ramp that leads up there. Looks like meeting Sarah Lyons and Lions Pride is the only way to get access to Three Dog. Well, now that we know exactly where we are, we know that we can't go any further south. Both sidewalks on either side of the car tunnel are blocked in with rubble, and the car tunnel itself is blocked in, which means our only way out is to go across the sky bridge to find out wherever that metro station might take us. Before we do, we can turn right to loot two ammo canisters under a picnic table, upon which is a first aid box. And then when ready, we can head down the stairs to Metro Junction. On the other side of the gate, we head down towards the turnstiles, but we see that the ramp leading down to the platform is blocked in with rubble. So we've got to turn right to go through a door and head down a staircase, follow it all the way to the bottom until we arrive at the train tracks. The path to the south is blocked, but turning right, we see a ghoul. We can get rid of him. wasting way too much ammo along the way. Crossing the tracks, we see that the tracks veer off to the east as well, but peering down there, we don't see any enemies yet. Between the two tracks, we find a sign. To GNR Outpost, to the left, to Mall Outpost, to the right. Let's head left for now. The tracks eventually lead to a ruined train station. Oh, but there's a ghoul here. He doesn't appear to see us, so we can try for a sneak critical. And that appears to be it. The second track is blocked in with rubble, doesn't go anywhere. And this is a unique one because it appears to not have a floating waiting platform. Instead, the waiting platform was on either side of the tracks. There was also no exit out to the east. Our only way out of this unnamed station is to head through the ramp to the west. Here we find a Nuka-Cola machine right next to a ramp that leads out to Chevy Chase. Heading up the stairs, we arrive in the light of day to find Chevy Chase. And it looks pretty, but this video is not about Chevy Chase. So uh, we'll have to come back later. Turning around, we can go back through the gate, then down the ramp to the train platform. We can cross the tracks, go south down the second track, and this time at the signs, follow it to Mall Outpost. Well, I think I know where this is going to take us. Moving forward ever so slowly, we arrive in another metro station. This one appears to have greater signs of life, though. We do find a barrel on fire. That must mean raiders. Creeping forward, this one, unlike the last one, does have a floating waiting platform. There are two trains, one on either track. We can move over a scrap bridge to the center platform. Here we find the body of a raider that we can loot. And then exploring the tracks to the south, we find one completely blocked in, and we hear the sounds of ghouls. Looks like they're above us. The other track, however, 
looks like it goes on towards a gate. And near to this tunnel is a table with a light on it. Hmm. Well, before we go down there, let's clear the ghouls from the waiting platform above. Hopping over some rubble to the south, we can climb an escalator to get rid of the ghouls. Well, it looks like raiders were here, but ghouls took care of them. We find raider cages hanging from the ceiling, lying on the platform, and raider bodies all over the place. We can loot the lot of them for a great deal of ammunition. The ticket booth was used to store all of their booze, but mostly we just find empties. There's another escalator leading back down to the northern side of the train platform. And then moving to the south, oh, we see that table with the light on it and a magazine on it, hopping down. A copy of Grognak the Barbarian. Nice. Well, since we're down here, we'll go east down the tracks to see what's down here. We find a door that leads to a hallway, which leads to a door that goes to Vernon Square. Outside, we find another exterior train station, like the one at Falls Church. Off to the southeast, we find the Statesman Hotel. Looks like there's a mutant over there. I fully explored the Statesman Hotel in my video on Riley's Rangers. And we revisited it briefly in my video on Stealing Independence. But we didn't completely explore Vernon Square in that video. At least I don't think we did, so we'll have to come back at another time to explore Vernon Square. Instead, we'll go back into Metro Junction and head back up the escalators to see where the waiting platform takes us. Moving to the north, we pass through a bunch of raider barricades and a bunch of empty lockers to find an etotronic on the wall with some mentats and dandy boy apples and a ramp that leads up again to Vernon Square. But then right on the other side, Oh, come on! God. Okay, Vernon Square, one mutant down, lots to go. Here we find a bunch of interesting architecture. Can't wait to give this one a thorough treatment. Off to the southeast is the vault -Tec headquarters, which I explored. In a previous episode, we had to come here during the quest Agatha's Song, but we never fully explored Vernon Square at the time. So we'll be back, mutants. See you later. Back into the metro. We can head through the turnstiles back to the waiting platform and cross it, admiring the gruesome display along the way, to head up the ramp on the opposite side. Loot the Nuka Cola machine on the opposite side, and then take the ramp on the opposite side back to DuPont Circle. We arrived back at DuPont Circle, but no idea what part of DuPont Circle. Looks like we've just discovered DuPont Northeast. Creeping up the stairs, there's a ruined building in front of us. Don't recognize any of this. Uh oh. Oh, shoot! Ah! Back inside! Ah! Oh. oh, man. There were raiders on the top of that ruined building directly facing this metro exit. Um, well, uh, since we're a bit turned around anyway, and since we don't want to be fish in a barrel, instead of going back to DuPont Circle that way, let's retrace our steps to see if we can find a way to sneak up behind them. So retracing our steps, we can leave Metro Junction, head back to the tracks, turn left to go through the utility door, follow it all the way up the stairs, and exit back out to DuPont Circle. But before we go, we can say goodbye to Metro Junction with a brief montage.
Now to get back to where we started, we've got to go through the collapsed car tunnel again. Remember, there's no way back there from here. Both sides of the sidewalk are blocked in with rubble. So back into the collapsed car tunnel, we can navigate our way through it, all the way back to the southern end, through the door to the right, up the stairs, and back out to DuPont Circle. And since this is likely the last time we'll be in the collapsed car tunnel, we can bid it farewell with another brief montage of its best sights. Okay, we're back. There's the door to the DuPont station. There's the door to the collapsed car tunnel. Taking the escalators all the way back to the top, we can move back towards the collapsed car tunnel and take a look at the nearby map to get our bearings again. The dark dot labeled DuPont North here is an unmarked location on the map. That was the metro station just outside the GNR building above the collapsed car tunnel that led to Metro Junction. The one directly below it with the white dot, which is a marked location on the map, is DuPont Northeast. That was the exit on the other side of the waiting platform of Metro Junction opposite Vernon Square North that led to the ruins with the raiders shooting at us. And so we turned around and retreated back into the tunnels. We found Chevy Chase East by taking the tracks to the left at that sign. That was the metro station that didn't have the upper waiting platform. And then by taking the tracks to the right, we found two exits to Vernon Square. The first was on the track level that led out a door just outside the Statesman Hotel. And then the other was through the ramp on the waiting platform to the northeast that led to Vernon Square North, where we found the vault -Tec headquarters. This shows us that the layout of the train stations is a bit odd. As we just experienced, Vernon Square North and DuPont Northeast are just on opposite ends of the Metro Junction waiting platform. They should be right next to each other on the map, but they're not, and it's not the fault of the map maker. It's that way on the Pip-Boy map as well. The problem with trying to map a game like this is we find that the Pip-Boy map and the in-game maps don't actually correspond to the layout of the metro stations and where they connect to in the game. DuPont Northeast should be right next to Vernon Square North. That's how we find it in the actual game. But if we put it there, then it places it outside of DuPont Circle, well within Vernon Square. So it doesn't really make sense, but we'll just have to make the best of it. All right, moving from the map, we could go north to finish exploring the circle of DuPont Circle, but we can instead cross the sky bridge to see what's over here. After all, we did see this alley. Moving down the alley, we see a trip wire. We don't know what it's connected to. We can disarm it, but looking around, we still don't see what it could have possibly been connected to. Oh, there it is. I missed it in game, but I caught it in editing. There's a drain pipe, and had we triggered it, grenades would have fallen down the drain pipe and exploded at our feet. Yeah. Oh. Okay, raiders over there. Retracing our steps, we can hide behind this wall and see if they come for us. God, teleporting raiders. <laughs> that was unnecessarily painful. After looting, we can head down the alley and we appear to be in some sort of commercial square. Lots of shops all around us. But before we can explore them, a oh, few more raiders to clear. We'll wait for them. Whoa, 
Why is it that I'm always tripping mines, but when the raiders step on a mine, they don't trip it? Stinking raiders, they get all the breaks. Nearby is a cup of Joe coffee, but like the last one we found, we don't find a door to explore the interior of this store. I'm guessing that a cup of Joe must be a regional local brand of coffee here in the DC area, as we never find them in the Mojave Wasteland nor in Boston. After looting the bodies and looting the mines, we can turn around to see what this is exactly. Lady Frumperton's Fashions. Well, at least I can pronounce it. Apparently, it's a clothing store. We find a couple of mannequins here and posters in the windows. We can head inside to see what's going on, and it appears to be a rather small shop. Behind the counter, we find a copy of Tales of a Junktown Jerky Vendor lying on top of an average locked box safe. Inside, we find a stack of caps, some scotch, some 10 millimeter rounds, and a silenced 10 millimeter pistol. All right, my very first silenced weapon. I'll try to put this to good use. We can examine the various displays that they had going on here. We don't find much of value. There is one console table with a variety of glasses laid out, another countertop with hats and all sorts of pre-war clothing, and another one by the bathrooms with even more hats. This is really the place to hit if we want some clothing to dress up our character. There is a changing room, but it's mostly empty. So, well, that's it for Lady Frumperton's fashions. Heading back out to DuPont Circle, we can move across the plaza towards the main road. Oh, 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 God. And with that, we discover DuPont East. I'm gonna have to pay closer attention to the ground. We see a ruin off to the north, heading that way. Oh, <laughs> it's just a big joke at this point. I hate mines, I hate them. I pulled out the silenced 10 mil because this looks like the sort of building where raiders might be overlooking a certain metro station to snipe off potential wastelanders. But getting inside, we see that the staircase is blocked up so we can actually get up there. Well, I wonder if the raiders can. Then moving through a door in the middle of the room. Oh. Oh, this silenced 10 mil is a pea shooter. It really depends on a sneak critical to function. Pulling out the shotgun. You like that? Yeah. One more stim pack to cure my broken head. Heading to the door, we can peer out of it. We hear more raiders in that ruin. Stand down, boys. But I was really frustrated that I couldn't get up the staircase. I wanted a higher vantage point from which to shoot. Heading back out to the square, we can see if we can find something. Moving around a scrap wall, we don't find a staircase up. We find a staircase down. A staircase leading to hospital maintenance. Well, where's that going to take us? Sure enough, we do find a stretcher laying out here. Presumably, there's a hospital nearby. And indeed, looking at the walls of one of these ruined buildings, we find a cross. We must be just outside a hospital. But there is no door leading into the hospital, but the door leading to hospital maintenance. So we can head down the staircase to arrive at the dry sewer. Down a staircase, we find a skeleton pile next to a baby carriage. The suitcase is empty. Moving left, we can head down a staircase and round a corner to open a security door. Talon Company? No! Looks like there's one more to the right. Grabbing some frag grenades, we can toss them down the stairs. I want this one's head up. Got him. Okay, well, we just met our first talent company mercs. Um, awful, but also awesome opportunity. At last, we can get some real armor. Looting the first corpse, we find a laser pistol, energy cells, and Talon combat armor. It has real low durability right now, but if we find enough of it, we can repair it up to be better than any raider armor. It was at this point, however, that I was just enormously encumbered. 
I had eaten all of my boxed and loose food. I dropped all my unnecessary weapons and armor, so I had to just get rid of a bunch of frag mines to lighten the load a bit. Maybe I'll have an opportunity to come back and loot them again later. At the second body, we can loot the second set of Talon combat armor to repair up the suit we have and get two more damage resistance. And already it's much better than our raider armor. Heading down the stairs, we find a pressure plate. Doesn't appear to be attached to anything. At the bottom of the stairs, we head out a door into a sewer. We see a fire burning to the right, and we hear sounds of gunfire to the left. The path to the right is blocked in with rubble and trash, however, so turning back around, we can follow the sounds of gunfire. It's more Talon Company. They're fighting something. I thought I'd be clever and lighten my load at the same time by throwing down a bunch of frag mines here and hoping that I could lure some of these Talon Company mercs my way. Tossing a grenade. Well, he ran. Something bigger and badder is out there. Whatever could it be? Creeping closer. Oh, it's mutants. Of course it's mutants. Run away. Let's get down here. Let's bring the mutants to our mind trap. Come on, mutants. I got a surprise for you. Let's make sure they see us. In here, fellas. Almost dead. That's one. One more to go, and I think he had a minigun. Oh, we're alive. Thank God. Ah, uh, well, the mines worked. Not the way I wanted to, but they worked. We can loot the bodies. I'm not even going to touch that minigun. It's way too heavy. But we can loot all the meat that these mutants are carrying. That's bound to come in handy. Heading up the ramp, there was that other talent company merc who ran. Let's see if we can find him. He ran to the left somewhere. Uh, but I wanted to explore up and to the right where the mutants came from. Heading up the ramp, we can loot the body of the talent company merc that the mutants killed. Grab his combat armor to repair the suit we got. That's three more DR. God, I love it. At the top of the ramp, we just find a big trash pile. This is a huge circular room and a dead end. Looks like a bunch of trash from the nearby hospital. We find a stretcher here, a ham radio, surgical trays and knives, a first aid kit here, a toolbox there, another first aid kit here. No rat away, however. That's what we really need. Sifting through the rubble, some of which contain skeletons, we don't really find much else of interest. So turning around, we can head down this ramp, and we find two options. We can continue down the tunnel to the east, or turn right into this room. Uh -huh. There you are. Well, that answered it for us. Let's wait for him to pop out. <laughs> Hunting rifle versus 10 mil SMG. SMG wins. And that's one more suit of combat armor that improves our DR by two more. Our DR is now 20, nine more than we had with a fully repaired suit of Raider armor. That's insane. Heading up these stairs, we just see that this room is a dead end. The Talon Company Merc was just patrolling a supply room. Against the far wall, we find a shelf filled with scrap. On the middle shelf is a copy of Dean's Electronics, a toolbox on the bottom. We can move this stew pot. Inside, we find cherry bombs. And then on a nearby wall is a first aid kit with one right away, at least. We can take it. It brings us down to 451. Ugh, it's painful. So moving back down to the tracks, we can turn right. Oh, and of course, there's a big pile of toxic radioactive barrels just sitting there. Gonna have to sneak by these. <laughs> oh, okay. Either the place is haunted or around the corner, we've got super mutants. Great. Let's see what to do. Um, well, the whole frag mine thing seemed to work last time. We can throw a few around here. Ah, 
That should do it. Then get their attention. What? What? You're kidding. Okay, well, at least there's one at full health. So, did I just get a couple of really insane crits there, or were those first two mutants already slightly hurt or something? Because I barely grazed them with my 10 mil, and they died. Lying on the ground here is a Talon Company Merc. Maybe this is answering the question for us. Perhaps the mutants fought with this Talon Company Merc, and they prevailed, but not before taking massive damages. He was carrying a 10 mil submachine gun. We can use it to repair the one we have, and then we can use his suit of combat armor to repair the one we have. We don't get any more DR from it, but at least we improve its condition. His body is lying on top of a Protectron, with nothing of interest inside. Then up the ramp. The bodies of these super mutants are lying on a ramp that goes off to the east, but before going up the ramp to the east, we can see what's through this door. Heading through the door and up the stairs, we can open a door at the end of the stairs to find more mutants in a room! Okay, I'm just I'm gonna close the door. Closing the door. I'm putting it on a mine. <laughs> mine. And another mine. Then round the corner. More mines. Gee. Come and get him, baby. Boom! Ah. What was that? Am I dead? I'm not dead. Oh, Stimpex. Thank you, Stimpex. What was that? They must have ignited some gas that was hovering there or something. Oh! Let's see, what gun actually has ammo? Oh, the assault rifle. Cool. There's a massacre. At least I'm the last one standing. Well, that was insane. There must have been some sort of hovering gas that had collected at the bottom of this ramp that the mutants ignited with the minigun, which incapacitated me and knocked me to the ground. Look at all these shell casings and bullet holes. God, this is just nuts. Well, the mutants are all dead. Thank God we can head into that room and see what was here. Lots of generators and machinery. Oh, I should have shot these generators. That would have knocked a few of them out. Between all of the generators are a bunch of boxes. We find a few darts in some of the boxes, a couple of caps here and there, nothing really of interest. Against the northern wall, we do find some scrap, if we had any blueprints to create crazy weapons with, but we really don't at this point. But for some reason, I'm starting to pick up reds as I explore some of these corners. I'm not sure why we're not finding any radioactive barrels in this room. To leave the room, we can open a door to the west, which leads to Our Lady of Hope Hospital. We fully explored Our Lady of Hope Hospital when I did my video on Riley's Rangers. That's right, during that quest, we had to go both to the Statesman Hotel and to Our Lady of Hope Hospital, both of which were in Vernon Square. So it looks like this dry sewer, as the game calls it, is another back entrance into Vernon Square. But since we've already explored this hospital, we'll backtrack for now back to the sewer where we left all of those dead mutants. We can head east up the ramp. This rounds a corner to arrive at a dead end where we find a bed. Uh, if only I had known this was here. Would have saved me a lot of headache. Well, we can rest for an hour to heal up and heal all of our limbs. There's no loot, however, up here, it's just a bed. So with that, we've explored the dry sewer and the hospital maintenance sector. Retracing our steps, we can go down the sewer ramp, loot any mines we left behind, head to back up the staircase, and loot all of those mines we left when we were completely out of carry weight. Should be able to carry these again. Head through the door, go up the stairs, turn right to re-emerge back at DuPont Circle. 
So we're back in that small plaza with Lady Frumperton's fashions in the coffee shop in this ruined series of buildings. We see an alleyway on the other side of this ruined building, so we don't have to go through it to get to here. And in the wall of this building is a door. Our Pip-Boy compass does pick up a few enemies off to the northwest, but we don't see any on this bottom floor. But just then, we see movement. That's one. Any others? What? Where did he come from? And with that, I level up, but it doesn't give me the option to choose my stats because I'm still in combat. Heading out of this building, we see another ruined building around the corner. Moving through this doorway, we see a number of boarded off rooms that we can't get to. There is a staircase leading to an upper portion, and this platform overlooks the metro station where we came out and got shot at like fish in a barrel. All right, well, now we know where we're at, but there's no enemies up here. How exactly do we find the other raiders on our compass? Well, this is a dead end unless we wanted to jump into the street, so heading back into the big ruined concrete building, we can take the staircase up to the second floor. I went through pretty carefully, examining room after room, crawling to floating platforms across wooden planks, but we don't find any enemies here. There are a few pieces of furniture, but no loot of interest. And here on the second floor, we find a staircase to the third, but the third is just as empty as the second. Though from here, we see a Burnside Bank and Loan sign on a nearby building. We can peer out the windows, and there we do see a bit of a raider camp, and we hear a voice. Scared, huh? You should be. Okay, well, how do we get there? There's a scrap walkway leading to this building, heading down to the second floor. Oh, we gotta hop out this window. Hopping out the window, we can go across to the rooftop of the next building. Bro, wait a minute. This is where we were. I got really confused at this point. I couldn't find the raiders that I could hear. It wasn't until I found a gap between the big concrete building and the brick building overlooking the metro station that I finally found something new squeezing through the crack. We find a room to the right and a Palowski preservation shelter with a bunch of skeletons inside. Inside the shelter is a Vault-Tec lunchbox, a 32 caliber revolver, and a stim pack on the ground. And it was here the raiders found me. Damn. Ah! Running into a building. Where did they come from? Are they out in the street? No? Heading back out to the alley, we can move through the other door on this bottom level and then move to a staircase. Fucking hide from me! And there he is. I think that does it. Gosh, how annoying. Well, up here, we finally find that raider camp that we saw from the third floor of the concrete building. Here we find some beds, an ammo canister on the ground, a shelf with a first aid box on top, as well as a 10 millimeter pistol, some psycho, and a pre-war book on a middle shelf that's 100 caps from Scribe Yearling, and then some med axe on the bottom shelf. On another shelf, we find a box with a bunch of tools and scotch inside. But this is a dead end unless we want to jump into the street. And while walking around, the game finally decides that I'm out of combat. I leveled up to level 8. We can dump our points into repair. And then at this point, the guide tells me to get strong back, but because I'm so irradiated, my endurance is too low to select that perk. So instead, I chose the next perk that the guide wants me to take, which is Scoundrel. Though I'm not sure I'm going to be bartering with anybody on this playthrough. Oh well, we'll go ahead and get it. Exploring each of these buildings yields little else. These ruins are a bit of a maze in and of themselves, but eventually we can take any number of paths, including simply jumping from them to arrive back on the street. These raider buildings were right outside the pre-war bank, and it looks like that bank was right at DuPont Circle. We've arrived back at the circle. Turning left, there's the collapsed train car tunnel, and there's the path we took. We climbed out of that metro station, went across the walkway, and down the alleyway, where we explored all of those ruins behind the buildings, which led just outside this Burntide Bank and Loan. Sadly, we can't explore the Burntide Bank and Loan. The doors are partially obscured by a rubble pile. 
Okay, well, that road leading to the circle explored. We can continue in a counterclockwise fashion to arrive at the road that the ruined buildings overlooked. And this is where they shot at us when we came out of this metro station. And sure enough, going down to the gate, it leads to Metro Junction. All right, that piece of the puzzle is solved. Moving behind the metro station, we can loot a trash bin, but it's empty. Loot a Nuka-Cola machine for its Nuka-Cola, and then head back to the street. Back at DuPont Circle, we can continue counterclockwise. Up, oh, and we come under fire. But wait a minute, where are they coming from? Oh, they're coming from behind me. But wait a minute, I came from there. Hiding behind a tree. Where did this radar come from? With the raider dead, we can continue counterclockwise. This road is blocked in with rubble, but we find a gap between the building and the rubble pile that we can sneak through. Oh, oh of course. Of course there's a mine. What? No. It's free mines day. Mines for everybody. Let's just have fun with mines. Oh, oh, there's another raider. Okay. We saw a raider walking around down there. Looks like he saw me. Let's wait here behind the pillar until he pops out. <laughs> it's another stim pack gone. <sighs> well, even though the road is completely blocked up, there is a passageway between this building and the rubble that we can sort of navigate through. And at the very end, it leads to a building off to the left, and... What's this? Entrance to the sunken sewer? Another sewer? Really? Okay. Diving in. At the bottom of the ladder, we stand amongst rubble. We start soaking up rads like a madman. Twelve rads a second? Are you kidding me? Popping some radex and putting on our radiation suit, we bring it down to four rads a second but it keeps climbing what okay we got to make this quick the path to the south is blocked but we see a door to the left running in oh and the radiation sickness is creeping up on us it's reducing our endurance and our strength, which is reducing our carrying capacity. I'm encumbered like crazy, creeping into this room slowly. Can try to get rid of these last few ghouls. I had to dump some stuff that I didn't need in my inventory. There was just no way around it. Now that we can walk again. All right, the ghouls are dead. Let's see if there's anything of value here. Was it worth it? We can loot the bodies really quickly, and then against the northern wall, we find a copy of US Army 30 Handy Flamethrower Recipes on top of an average locked box safe right next to some darts. We'll open the safe in a second because on a shelf next to it are two pieces of Radaway, three with one more on the bottom. Then we can loot a stim pack, a blood pack, a scoped 44 Magnum revolver, an ammunition box, another one on the top shelf, and then finally taking the time to put on our utility jumpsuit to get our lockpick skill high enough to pick this box safe. Inside we find, no, it wasn't worth it. 15 bottle caps and one buff out. Really? God. Putting our radiation suit back on. We can get the hell out of here. Oh, but we find a staircase leading down. Do I want to explore it? Uh... No, no, I don't want to explore it. Yes, get out of here. Retracing. Oh, now I'm sick with deadly rat poison. All right, let's use up our rat away. We only got three. Ugh. At least we can walk again back to the tunnel. We can take the ladder back to DuPont Circle. Oh, no. Looking at our stats, we're at 674. Negative three endurance, negative two agility, negative one strength. I mean, I can't do this forever. At some point, I'm either just going to have to drop dead or... I don't know. Go to the underworld, maybe? I haven't even discovered it yet. Though we have found a few ways to the mall. Maybe that's what I'll eventually have to do. Well, with the sewer explored, we can go through this door to the northwest. This leads us through a ruined building to arrive in an alleyway with a raider. Time to 
tear you apart! Oh, kick ass! Alright, so I killed the raider, and then I heard a raider voice, but I didn't know where he was. This is the dead end. We can't go anywhere from here. So, retracing our steps, we can go back to the road filled in with rubble, and then squeeze between the building and the rubble pile to again arrive back at the circle in DuPont Circle. I moved around to the other side of this building, but it just led to the collapsed car tunnel. But, with that We've explored all of DuPont Circle. Now to figure out where we want to go next. Well, we found two doors leading to Vernon Square, three if you count the passageway through Our Lady of Hope Hospital, and we found one door leading to Chevy Chase. Then there was the other path leading to Metro Central. We've found a couple of those so far. Then from Georgetown, there was Pennsylvania Avenue and the Mall. Lots of options. Well, taking a look at the map, if we take any of those other paths, they're going to take us east and south. But if we go east and south, we miss all of this stuff to the north. I'm thinking I want to go clockwise here, scoop up all of this territory to the north, and then start going east and south to finish all of DC. So with that in mind, the best option to take now is Chevy Chase, because from Chevy Chase, we can go north, then take it east, and then go south. So first, heading back to the Raider camp by Foggy Bottom, we can rest up. Then, heading back towards the collapsed car tunnel, we can... Really? Really? I cleared them all! God! No! <sighs> so, heading back to the makeshift raider camp, we can again rest to heal our broken limb. And then, heading back towards the collapsed car tunnel, we can take this unmarked metro station to Metro Junction. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. That was the voice we heard on the other side of that wall. All right, so this is telling us that raiders can enter and leave metro stations at will. Remember, we already cleared this metro station, so this is a guy from DuPont Circle who crawled down into here. He must have been outside while I was killing that other raider on the other side of the wall, and then for some reason decided to come into the metro. At any rate, we can head down to the tracks, and instead of going right towards the mall, we can go down the tracks towards the GNR outpost, cross the wooden walkway to the waiting platform to the west, go down the tunnel, and open the gate to Chevy Chase. Before we arrive at Chevy Chase, we can say goodbye to DuPont Circle by highlighting some of its best sights.
In our next episode, we'll explore all of Chevy Chase and then figure out where to go from there. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, and YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names and gain access to ox emojis that they can use in my video comments and in the live chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.